Hey you, thanks for tuning in. Today's story will make you want to take a closer look to those nursing our families and beloved ones. Let's get to the story of today. Marie was born in a small village called Wasmond, into just any ordinary farmer family. It was fairly normal in those days that she needed to help on the land from an early age on and therefore she didn't attend school as much as she should. But Marie was actually a clever girl, she gathered all her courage together and asked the local paster to educate her in maths, reading and writing. And he did until she was around 16 years young. She then decided to leave her family to go live by an aunt in Louis. She lived in a small room in the attic and decided she deserved better and moved out soon after to live with a girlfriend. Not long after she met her first lover Jan when she was just 17. They met at the Maria festivities in August 1896. He was the first of a series of lovers, a habit she would keep when she was married in later years. A few years later in 1905 she met her husband Charles Becker during the World Exposition in Louis. She was rising on the social ladder and at work she was promoted and worked in a very well-known fashion boutique. She had her own house and was a regular visite of the established riches to give them fashion advice. A year later in 1906 the couple married. The couple did move out to a home next to a sawmill who was property of the family Becker. For some reason Marie didn't fit in and could never fully integrate into the Becker family. There were a lot of conflicts between her and the father of Charles. Charles then took his part of the sawmill in cash and moved away to start a butcher shop, but without any knowledge that declined fast. Marie in the meantime was more and more adventurous with all the men seeking her attention and the very real chance for more than just that. In later years she would state it was not given to every female to withstand the sensual avances of men. In 1912 the father of Charles died, so Charles once again took responsibility by taking over the sawmill, and Marie was able to open her little sewing shop. But then the First World War came along. Marie was very interested in those German men so her shop flourished while her husband's sawmill was catastrophically destroyed. In 1920 she was able to see her long-lasting dream come true by opening a fashion shop in Louis. In little time she had so much success she needed to hire already up to four people. Then the crush of her life came along Maximilian Hootie, who she met in 1928. She couldn't be happier about her life, but as the saying goes it didn't last it very long. The stock crash a small year later in 1929 caused devastating losses to her store, and Marie Rufusing to give up living the high life caused eventually the downfall and the complete closure of her beloved store in 1934. Rewind two years back and we are back in 1932 when Charles Becker would die due to cancer. To relieve the pain and make the last moments of the man more comfortable he was given digitalin by the attending doctor, a drug we need to remember. Marie already in the second half of her life, paying of the debts of her dead husband and with a forced returnal to a job as a sewing worker. In that very moment I believe bad seeds were planted into mind of the upon then just very unfaithful Marie. At that time she was already 53 years of age and never anyone could have imagined what is yet to come. She was also having an affair with a notor woman hunter Lambert Bayer, he was much younger than she was and she was able to live out every secure fantasy she had with him. But after the death of her husband and respecting enough amount of time to come out in public with her husband slash lover, to maintain her lifestyle she needed to be inventive and she was so inventive a handful of people died around her, all friends of hers but she managed to stay completely out of picture as a suspect. But what kind of drug was able to stay under the radar for so long? Let's see what digitalin actually is. Digitoxin is a cardiac glycoside that can be isolated from foxglove. Better known under the trade name digitalin, it was often used in the past as a medicine for heart patients. Later it was replaced by the comparable digoxin, which is linked in a different way with hydroxyl groups. Now we are this much wiser, let's get on with the story. But Marie still hadn't enough. Marie was very addicted to her lifestyle and she saw her funds go rapidly down and she decided to kill her lover Bayer, she did so with the same drug she used on all the others, the same drug that was used legally by a doctor to ease the pain of her husband Charles passing. Digitalin, the drug we learned about earlier on. How many of you remembered it was made from the foxglove? Let me know in the comments. Marie by then was working as a caretaker, a nurse at home if you will. 
and again soon running low on funds she took refugee to her beloved method, poisoning, as she would later state that her wealth came above everything, even her beloved ones, and she would do anything in her power to keep it that way, even if that meant she needed to kill for it. It was later kind of proved she did this in at least ten homes where she would kill and rob the victims of their possessions. Even more extreme she was sometimes able to let these people include her in their will or was granted big loans and when it was time to repay or once she was documented in the will of those poor people, shortly after they all mysteriously died. There was at least one brighter mind than the other cause there were several letter written to the police about Marie and what she was doing, but the police just kind of ignored the first few letters, after a few more cases of victims dying mysteriously without a real cause. The police grew a little suspicion and started to gaze an eye at her. It was not until one of Marie her friends was complaining about her husband's behavior and that she was tired of him, and above all she suspected him of cheating on her, Marie jokingly seriously said she had a very easy solution for that and if she wanted she would help her to get rid of him. The after that not so good friend went straight to the police and told what Marie proposed, the letters now this witness telling the story. All alarm signals and red flags were there but police was not able to take any action as there wasn't any shred though proof available. So a week, even monthly long shadowing action began, and finally they were able to catch her almost in the act carrying the poison with her. She was arrested at the spot. The police then went to her home, and they found astonishing amounts of jewelry belonging to deceased ones, furniture, clothing, and so on. Anything she was able to steal was stolen. Then several of the victims' bodies were exhumed and cause they now knew what to search for, digitalin was found in the system of every body. After a short trial where many witnesses would tell stories about her acting skills, as she attended several of her own husband's funerals and seemed devastated and heartbroken, she tried to defend herself during trial but was given the death sentence, but that was converted to life in prison. She eventually died in prison in June 1942 during the Second World War. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it. I hope to see you again at the next video.